Someone Who Cares with Dr. Octavia Davis from the Evangelist Dispatch Ministry for prayer or words of encouragement please call 313-401-1527 thank you well praise the Lord amen greetings greetings to the precious people of God I'm so happy to be with you I am Dr. Octavia Davis, and this is Someone Who Cares. Amen. Praise God. And before we get into the Word of God, amen, we just have a short prayer. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we are going into your Word. Lord, we ask that you would speak to us, lift up, and manifest yourself in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Praise God. We thank God uh, for uh, this this uh, service, this broadcast, amen. Praise God. And we just want to, today we are talking about God has a plan for our, our, our lives, you know. And uh, a lot of times we, we, we act and we feel that maybe, you know, when things start going wrong, well, maybe he don't have a plan. You know, maybe I can fix this my own way. But uh, God does have a plan. And in um, Psalms 34, 19, we don't escape all troubles. We have them too. But the Lord says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But Lord, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Amen. So we know we're going to have uh, difficulties and uh, afflictions and, and whatever, but they're just, they're not, we don't have them to uh, have us to forget about God and whatever, whatever's going on. Amen. God has a plan. And we may, sometimes we don't understand what, what you know, when he, things happen and well, no, is, is, is this God or is this not God? Amen. But we just want to, uh, uh, you know, get into the word of God. Amen. And in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, is uh, he says, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Amen. Okay, when we do that, we know that the, the Lord is going to uh, pull us out. Amen. He might not do it right then and there. Amen. But he will do it. And a lot of times he allows us to stay in uh, different situations. Amen. To, you know, for us to teach a lesson or for us to really get closer to him. And um, in Romans, the fifth chapter, verses three through six, we glory in tribulation. Amen. That's what Roman, Romans is saying. We glory in tribulation. Amen. Because we know that, you know, when we fall into divers uh, temptations, amen, that the God, our God is right there, amen, to, you know, Lift us out of it. And in uh, Romans 8, 28, it says, All adversity works together. Amen. For the glory of God. You know, adversity gets our attention. When adversity comes, we are forced to face problems and pressures that are all too big for us to solve. And in Matthew's uh, 11th chapter, the 28th verse Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Amen. A lot of times when adversity come and we're, we're you know, we forget, you know, who, 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 who who's we are. We're our God. We're our gods. Amen. We are his handiwork. Amen. And he's here. He's here to take care of us. But a lot of times we forget. Amen. But, you know, he says in Matthew, come unto me, all ye that labor. And I will give you rest. So if we out there and we're trying to labor in our own might and solve this problem our own way and not give it to God and let him solve it, amen, you know. So, you know, what he is saying is that, you know, call on him, you know, and and he, you know, he will give you rest. You don't have to do all this fighting. God will fight our battle for us if we just be patient. And in James 1 and 12, it says, God bless those who patiently 
endure testing and temptations. Amen. So, you know, we have the blessings of God upon us. Amen. And we have we have on the whole armor of God. Amen. And then we know when we're, we're tested, you know, we have to wait patiently, you know, enduring uh, uh, the testing and the temptation. Because God will, God will deliver us out of the dilemma. Amen. So, you know, uh, uh, God has a plan. Amen. And don't think that he doesn't because he will pull us out of the pits. And in James 1 and 12, it says, God blesses those who patiently endure testing and temptation. And in Galatians 6 and 9, let us not become weary in doing good. You know, and a lot of times, you know, we, uh, we doing good, doing this and that and speaking the truth and doing what God says that we should do and say what he says do. And then you look around and you say, hey, this, this is nothing is happening. Nothing is changing. Amen. But uh, in Galatians, God is saying, uh, let us not become weary in doing good. Amen. You know, we just, you know, we know that we, uh, we're we doing this for God, and he has his hands on us. Amen. And in uh, Joshua, which I, I love, Joshua 1 and, and 9, it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened, for the Lord God is with you wherever you go amen so joshua here uh, 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 the lord is saying in joshua 1 and 9 to be strong and courageous you know you know not to be afraid because the lord god is with us i don't care where we go he is with us so that we don't have to get all upset and this and that and how we gonna, how this is going to work out and what have you God says, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Trust God when you are in your pit fall. Amen. You know, you don't have to get all upset, uh, upset and pulling out your hair out. And, oh, me, oh, my, what's, what's going to happen? Trust God. When we are in, 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 in the pitfall, amen, that we know that he's right there because he has a plan for us. And his plan is not uh, uh, to destroy. Amen. You know, so we just we just thank God for what he's say, doing. And uh, trust God when we are in our pitfalls. I mean, that's a, you know, and okay, in um, circumstances, we can say uh, unwelcome circumstances where hope feels like a distant dream. We question God, how can this be happening? We push uh, Jeremiah 29 11 away. Look for a different answer. Fear finds its way into our thoughts, and we feel like. We are constantly fighting against it. You know, we know God is with us in the midst of our fear, but we wonder, you know, could this trial really be part of his plan for me? God has a plan. When we don't know which way to go, be assured that God has a plan for our life. Yeah, and that plan is not to do us harm, but do us good. Uh, and so we we'll just a little example in the Bible. We can go to Genesis 21 and 10. And uh, Hagar lived in the shadow of Sarah. You know, okay, uh, Sarah, you know, God had promised Sarah. And then in her old age, and she didn't, she really didn't believe it. She laughed. Amen. And so she sent uh, her husband into Hagar. And, and, uh, she conceived a son, amen. But, you know, Hagar, he, she lived in the shadow of Sarah. Their relationship was strained. Uh, Hagar made two trips into the desert. Uh, the first time, uh, she left on her own accord. The second time, Abraham sent her away 
at Sarah's request. And uh, she, Sarah said, get rid of that slave woman and her son. Her circumstances were beyond her control. When we feel powerless, we don't see a paved road uh, of the way and uh, uh, no one offers a help, helpful hand or a word of advice. Hagar wondered in the wilderness of Bathsheba. Emptiness can be scary. It reveals our insecurities, telling us we are alone. But with God, emptiness doesn't equal loneliness. In our stillness, in Isaiah 30, 21, it says, gives us directions. We seek. Uh, our own ears will hear him say, this is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. So we also, even though we're going through this and that, we should, you know, have a listening ear to hear what God is saying to us. Amen. And, you know, uh, Free releasing control, uh, releasing control draws us into a deeper place of trust. Hagar, she loved her son, Ismael, very much. Abraham's firstborn son. How could he condemn his own son to death? What matters to us matters even more to God. In Genesis twenty-one seventeen, Hagar, what's wrong? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boys crying as he lies there. God, he didn't hear Hagar's cry. He heard the boy, the son, cry. God promise, promises endure though even the toughest trials. Hagar's first trip, God made a promise. Second time, he told Hagar what to do and reminded her of this assurance. Go to him and comfort him. He promised to give God's promise, uh, Hagar, that Ismail would be the head of a great nation. And we know that uh, when hardship comes, it's easy for us to skip uh, backwards into what, what's, what if, what if it doesn't work out, what if God doesn't answer my prayer. My prayer, God is with us always. You know, then God opened Hagar's eyes and she saw a well full of water. Genesis 21:19. And we, we thank God for that. Amen. Then, you know, she, the, the Lord opened her eyes. Amen. And she saw there's the water there. She gave water to her son. Amen. God is there even when we don't see a way out at the moment. Amen. So we just have to remember, amen, that we get just get into his word and listen to what he's saying to it. He says, I'm lo, I'm with you always. Amen. Praise God. And he's there to pull us out of whatever is going on or whatever uh mess we have gotten ourselves in. He's there. You know to uh, rescue us so we know we have nothing to fear because our God is uh, God of love and he loves us and he has plans for our life and we just thank God for what he you know is doing in our lives but the important thing to remember is that God amen you know he has a plan he has a plan for our life, my life, your life, and everybody. He has a plan. Amen. And a lot of times we have to be still and know that he is God. You know, and so in uh, Psalm 16, verses 5 to 11, it says, You, Lord, are all I have. He is everything I need. He is all I need. Everything I want. Amen. You know, you, Lord. So we got to, you know, think with ourselves, Lord, okay, I'm out here in this wilderness, you know, out here in this situation. Uh, Lord, you know, and, you know, I'm afraid. 
but you know the Lord says in in His Word. Uh, you know the psalmist says, "You you Lord are all I have." Amen. And in Psalms forty six it says, "God is our refuge and strength, and every present help in trouble." This is my God, and I will praise Him. Amen. Uh, in Psalms nine. And nine, the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. And in Psalms, again, 34, uh, verse 10, those who seek the Lord let no lack, no good thing. Amen. Praise God. So the Lord is always on our side. And I was just giving these scriptures from the word of God. So, you know, and God has talked to us when we read his word and what he said that I'm with you always, you know, and, you know, uh, he's, he's talking to us. We're just reading his word and we read his word. He's talking to us. And, you know, I thank God for that. Uh, and then uh, to, uh, Philippians 4, 10 through 19, my God will supply all your knees according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God promises that he will provide what we need physically, emotionally, and spiritually for every situation enabled us to walk the difficult road when we need it. This provision and enabling uh, is, is called grace. Amen. Praise God. Uh, he says in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, my grace is sufficient for you. For power, for a power is perfected in weakness. Amen. So, you know, well, when we walk in God has promised, he has made us so many promises, amen, that he will provide what we need. You know, that every situation, you know, whatever is going on, we know, and uh, we're walking, it, it's called grace. We're walking in the grace of God. And in Second Corinthians 12 and 9, it says, My grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. And in Second Corinthians 9 and 8, God is able to make all grace abound to you. Amen. You know, humble yourself. You know, how do I give everything to God? Position yourself on the word of God. Stand in faith. Believe in God. Allow God to increase our faith. Face your issues. Face life head on. God is our refuge. We are safe in his arms. Amen. So we don't have to be people in hiding with the adversities of life. We stand and stand therefore. Amen. In the word of God. We're standing on the word of God. Amen. And then we like to say in, in Second Peter 1 and 3 that divine power has given us everything we need for life. Amen. Praise God. You know, we, we forget that. He has, given, he has given us everything, you know, to, to walk this walk, amen, to live this this life, amen. He has given us everything that we need. So we have need, you know, not to fear. And uh, in Psalms 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I be? Amen. And we, we thank God. For, for what he's doing in this time, in Jesus' name, you know, and uh, and I was talking about getting into the word of God, and um, in Psalms 37, it says, trust in the Lord and do good, trust, trust in the Lord and do good, and Psalms 1 and 2, it says, meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree Planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Amen. 
So the, the, the Lord is telling us to meditate in his word. You know, you get up in the morning, amen, you pray, amen, and you uh, um, uh, open up your Bible and meditate. I mean, you, you don't have to do it. It won't take you all day and all night. You just get up and, and, and look at the scriptures that the Lord give you, and as you go throughout the day, and you got that scripture, what he's, you know, he's telling you to do, and you just do it. Amen. You know, he says, meditate day and night. Amen. And you should be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Amen. And we know that it's the tree uh, that is plant, uh, planted by the rivers of water and his roots are going down and, and he's been, the tree has been fed by the water, the brook, the river, whatever that's going by. Amen. So, you know, uh, that's the same thing with God. Amen. So, you know, we need God. Jesus is not just all we need. Jesus is all we have. Jesus gives us a purpose for life. Our next breath comes from Christ and our next meal. We are, we, we are nothing without Christ and we can do nothing without him. We were dead in sin when Jesus died for us and paid the price for us in paid the price for us in full. Jesus is our only claim to heaven. He is all we have. Because of Jesus, we can know God and pray through trials. Amen. We can pray through trials. Amen. Because God has taught us what to do. Amen. And we just thank God for what he is doing for us. Amen. What he is teaching for us. And, you know, we just ask God to just you know, bring it to our re uh, remembrance, you know, when things happen and we don't know what to do. And he will bring, the Holy Ghost will bring that scripture or whatever God has said to you. Amen. In that situation. And everything will be all right. Amen. You know, and in Psalms 32 and 8, I will guide you along the best, the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. You have the word of God. God said he is he is with us always. He walks and he talks with us along the way. We just have to have a spiritual ear to hear what he is saying to us. And I thank, I thank God uh, for what he's doing because God is a good God. Amen. Because God, he created the world good and he created human, the humans good. He gave us the ability to choose, known as a free will, choices, free will, God has given to us. Amen. Praise God. So I just, you know, thank God for what he's doing in this day and hour. I thank God for his word. I thank God for how he's teaching us, amen, and giving, giving us a listening ear to hear what he is saying unto us, amen. And, uh, you know, God, uh, his salvation, I'd just like to take time out and briefly say that, you know, uh, if we, uh, in First John 1 and 9, that if we just take our sins to the Lord, he will forgive us of all of our sins, amen. And, uh, you know, the Bible tells us that everyone has sinned, and the penalty of sin is death. Jesus Christ died for our sins, you know, and to be forgiven for our sins, we must believe and confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Praise God. And we just thank and praise God for what he has done for us, how he has made a way, and how he has made provisions as we go along this way and he has taught us you know how to walk in grace his grace amen and we just give god all the glory and all the praise amen and i just like to say that uh if you don't know the lord jesus christ as your personal savior romans 10 and 9 says that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the lord lord jesus and shall believe in thy heart that god hath raised him from the dead Thou shalt be saved. Amen. And that shall, that means it's a done deal. 
the minute you do that and you believe it in your heart, amen, you are saved. Amen. So I just want to just say this short prayer. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we bring your people before you right now. Lord, we ask that you would just get their requests, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask, amen, and we know that you are, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we thank you and we praise you for that. And we thank you for everything that you are doing for us right now. And we love you and we praise you and we give you all the glory and all the praise is thine in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. But you know, you say that little prayer and you really mean it in your heart. Amen. That he has forgiven your sin. Amen. And that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Amen. You are now a born again believer. And your name is wrote or written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we just thank God for that. We thank God for uh, you hearing the word of God and what God is saying to us. You know, and as, you know, I read the scriptures, I take everything. You know, I, I take it personally, what he is doing for me and what he has done. Amen. What he has brought me out of. Amen. I, it's, it's personal to me. I put I put my name, I tell you, in, 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 the, in the word when I'm reading. You know what God has done. Amen. Praise God. So we just love you. And we thank God for you being with us. Amen. And, uh, on this broadcast. And we just thank God that uh, he has or he will give you that listening ear. Amen. You just be quiet and let the Holy Ghost speak to you. Amen. The spirit of God that's within you. Amen. And that should, you know, uh, take care of everything. Amen. Amen. You know, God is so good. And I thank God for this lesson. Amen. And, and how he, uh, he is there and how, you know, he, he delivered, um, Hagar and her son and made a great nation out, out of Ish, Ishmael. Amen. When she was out there in the, in the, in the, in the desert, you know, wandering around, don't know what to do, right? pulling the hair and whatever else, you know. But God saw, he heard the child, Ismael's call, crying. He didn't call Ada. He heard Ismael's call, and he did something. He opened up Agar's eyes, and she saw the water, but she could give water to her child. You know, so God is there. Amen. We just want to, you know, give him all the glory, and we thank God for what he's doing at this time in our lives, in Jesus' name. God is a beautiful God. And I just thank God for this lesson. Amen. And I believe you have gotten something out of this lesson. You just be still and hear what God is saying and look at these different scriptures. Amen. And he's talking to you. He's talking to us. He's talking to me. Amen. And I just thank God for him. And I thank God for what he's doing. I thank God for his healing power. In the name of Jesus, Lord. Because he paid the supreme price on the cross of Calvary. Amen. So that it says in Isaiah that by his stripes we are healed. There's no, there's no uh, maybe or whatever. You know, it's we are healed. And we thank God for complete healing in your body, you just grab hold of it. You know, if you have something going on in your body, grab hold of it, amen. And everything will be all right. Thank you, Jesus. Someone Who Cares with Dr. Octavia Davis from the Evangelist Dispatch Ministry for prayer or words of encouragement, please call 313-401 
mystery. Lord,